The station covering all of the DMV. This is DC News Now. Coming up on DC News Now at noon, concerns continue. Carjackings are on the rise in the DMV. We'll go to Silver Spring, where police are working around the clock to find those responsible. And later, what's going on with the price of eggs? Why some senators say the cause behind the sticker shock might not be as random as some thought. And the rain and the snow from yesterday's storm system is long gone, but we're still dealing with some after effects of yesterday's storm. When will those blustery winds out there finally calm down? We'll have a check of the forecast here in just a bit. Thank you, Damon. Good afternoon, and thank you for joining us for DC News Now at noon. I'm Mark Hall. A new push for school safety in Northern Virginia it comes after a six-year-old brought a gun to school and shot his teacher in Newport News earlier this month. Now, this afternoon, leaders in Prince William County are looking to take a big step forward in securing school buildings. DC News Now's Randy Bass has the latest from police and parents. Students here in Prince William County could soon see metal detectors as they walk into school buildings each morning, all part of a new push to keep guns out of classrooms and school hallways. Take a look at this video here showing you some safety devices that are already in place in other parts of the country. These in Charlotte, Mecklenburg, North Carolina, and they could soon be coming here to Prince William County. Decision makers from both public schools and county government met last night in a conversation centered around student safety, including what value these enhanced security measures could have. Prince William County Police Chief Peter Newsham is on board. We've uh, had two incidents involving guns in our high schools. Uh, that's too, too many. Uh, we don't want to have guns in our high schools. It's scary to all of us. But we also don't know how many guns are getting into the schools that we don't know about. Prince William County parents we talk to say it's a scary reality having to consider putting metal detectors in schools. It's happening everywhere now, so it almost feels necessary, but it's scary because I know my kids are going to come home after walking through those metal detectors and they're going to ask me why those, those are necessary, why those are there, why they have to go through it. I have a middle schooler who goes to Lake Ridge Middle and just this year a girl brought a knife to school and attacked another girl with it, put it up to her throat. It's terrifying. My daughter was terrified. So anything that will make her feel better and feel protected when she goes in there is worth it to me. Prince William County Superintendent Latanya McDade says demos of those detectors will come possibly as soon as next month, along with a chance for families to weigh in. And if that support from families and county leaders continues, the soonest we could see those devices implemented in school buildings is next year. In Prince William County, I'm Randy Bass, DC News Now. Thank you, Randy. Well, police, people in Loudoun County are having mixed feelings about whether police and other officials should pursue hate crime charges against those responsible for giving out flyers promoting white supremacy in several neighborhoods. According to the sheriff's office, the flyers were attached to bird seed with the message, pray for white America, written on them. And they also responded saying that there is no place in the community for hate of any kind and that there have not been any arrests made due to there being no criminal violations. Well, the Special Victims Unit of the Arlington County Police Department is continuing its investigation into a 17-year-old charged with assault. The victim was running along the Arlington Boulevard Trail in late November when the male suspect groped her from behind. Now, similar incidents were reported in Clarendon Courthouse and Radnor Fort Myer Heights neighborhoods in November and December. Police are investigating the suspect's possible involvement in those incidents and also believe that there are additional unreported assaults. Had the school administrators acted in the interest of their teachers and their students, Abby would not have sustained a gunshot wound to the chest, a bullet that remains danger dangerously inside her body. We well, heard from Diane Toscano, an attorney representing the elementary school teacher that was shot in her classroom earlier this month in Newport News, Virginia. That teacher, Abigail Zwerner, is still recovering. Yesterday, Zwerner's lawyers announced that she plans to sue the school district after she says they were warned that the student had a gun and did nothing. Zwerner claims that Rich Neck Elementary administrators failed to act on three separate warnings that the boy had a gun. She says at 11 a.m. that day, she went to a school administrator to tell them that the six-year-old had threatened to beat up another student. Then around 12.30, Zwerner says a teacher told an administrator that they had searched the boy's backpack for a gun, but suspected that the boy put it in his pocket before recess. The administrator downplayed the report from the teacher 
and the possibility of a gun, saying, and I quote, well, he has little pockets. Well, then another student allegedly came forward during recess to make a report. Newport News Police Chief uh, corroborated part of Zwerner's story, saying that at least one administrator was aware of the threat. And that announcement yesterday from Zwerner came just hours before the Newport News School Board met last night and voted to fire the superintendent of school district, George Parker III. Well, senators are demanding to see for themselves what classified documents were found in the homes of President Joe Biden, former President Donald Trump, and former Vice President Mike Pence. Republicans and Democrats are accusing the Biden administration of stonewalling them over the matter. Washington correspondent Jesse Tenor takes a closer look. Literally every member of the committee, without exception, said this won't stand. The top lawmakers on the Senate Intelligence Committee argue the Biden administration is wrongly blocking their access to classified documents discovered in the homes of President Joe Biden, former President Donald Trump, and former Vice President Mike Pence. We simply want to know what was this information, what was these materials that they had, so that we can make an honest assessment. But Florida Republican Marco Rubio and Virginia Democrat Mark Warner left a classified meeting Wednesday night empty-handed. I'm very disappointed with the uh, lack of detail and a timeline on when we're going to get a briefing. The senators say their committee needs to know if any intelligence was compromised, but the administration says it can't provide that access while special counsels at the Justice Department investigate Trump and President Biden's handlings of the documents. The information we're asking for has no bearing whatsoever. It would interfere in no way with a criminal investigation. In the meantime, Arkansas Republican Tom Cotton says he and other committee members may move to block quick consideration of some of President Biden's nominees. Congress will impose pain on the administration until the, they provide these documents and that is that is coming from both parties well happening today president biden will meet with steam fitter union workers in virginia to speak about the economic progress made since taking office now, it's expected that the president will impose a 30 percent tax that will increase taxes for working families the address will begin at the 1 30 p.m make sure to check back with us at our newscast coming up at five with an update well, the Montgomery County Commission for Women is holding the 43rd Annual Women's Legislative Briefing this Sunday. The meeting will be virtual, and the theme is Empowered Women Protect Democracy. The meeting will host a variety of panels covering the empowerment of women in programming, women's health, and safety and education. They will also be hosting emerging leader sessions, and young people can discuss staying safe in stressful situations and expressing mental health. Tickets are currently $23, but the price will jump to $30 on Saturday. Student tickets are $5. And a bill is currently moving through the Virginia House of Delegates that would commemorate historic sites used by African Americans to stay safe during the Jim Crow era. Known as the Green Book, African Americans carried the book around that showed them safe hotels, guest houses, service stations, drug stores, and other businesses that were safe to travel to. Sites from the Green Book would be memorialized with signs provided by the Virginia Tourism Corporation and the State's Department of Transportation. 